All about Symbian and Mobile Industry Review. All about Symbian and Mobile Industry Review. Uh, Scott Weiss, the uh, User Interface Technology Manager here at Symbian Foundation, and I also chair the User Interface Council. Got a, a 5800 in my hand and, a, and uh, an E71 in my pocket. And I use the E71 for email and voice calls, and I use this device because it most closely represents the platform uh, for Symbian 2. And also, we're using it to demo some things on Symbian 3. And of course, there's a, there's a little shot. <laughs> we'll go into that more later. My favorite application, the one I use most, is probably Google Maps, uh, even within London. And you know, I was in Tokyo a few weeks ago for a council meeting, and uh, Tokyo, um, some of your viewers may know doesn't have street names on the street, so you know Google Maps is the best way to get around. Well, it, 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 there, are, there are three that I can think of that are most important to me. Okay, four. Um, and I don't know what order to put them in because there's, there's so much improvement going on. Um, first of all, I'll talk about um, our package owner, uh, Yako Hakipuro, and the work that he's done on the home screen. Uh, and probably a large number of people on his team. Uh, but we've got multiple page, multiple, multiple page support on the home screen and much better widget support. Now in Symbian 2, home screen was a single page, maybe two pages with a little bit of work. Now it's only limited by the memory available in the phone uh, for the number of pages that are, that are available to the user to create themselves. Uh, and they can have uh, unique wallpapers on each page uh, that's a big feature, and adding widgets, removing widgets, moving them around, it's a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. We've got some video footage that Yako shot in our, in our Symbian branded theme that we can uh, show as well, and uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, we're working on a Symbian 3 theme here at the foundation. Um, we've commissioned some work, and it's meant to be uh, a platform theme that is sophisticated, attractive, and uh, completely open source so that the community can take the icons, can take the wallpaper, um, all of the definitions for what we call the user interface Chrome, the buttons, the panels, the tabs, all of those um, elements can be customized by a device creator or by a software developer. And they can actually make new themes based on the theme that we've created. And we're leveraging uh, the third thing, which is the new graphics architecture in the theme itself. So we're using transparency and we're using gradients, um, which in previous devices might not have performed um, uh, as, as well as we'd like. In Symbian 3, with the um, support for hardware graphics acceleration, they're going to be really fast. And uh, fourth, I can't forget, uh, what uh, is most important to me uh, personally is the single tap enhancement to the platform. Uh, in previous versions of the platform, um, opening a list item required highlighting the list item with a single tab, and then a second tab to open it. Now that was a, a very logical shift from the button-based user interface of previous Symbian releases, but it strips out a step from almost every activity, anything from uh, making a phone call by using the context list to opening up an email uh, to changing the settings. So it's going to streamline the UI in a really fantastic way and make the platform much more enjoyable to use. Uh, single tap enhancement is a contribution made by Ixenos. Now, the way we did that is um, we held a user interface workshop in London. Uh, uh, actually, that one, uh, we held a user interface workshop in Helsinki just before a user interface council meeting. And Ixenos was able to attend. And one of the Im important themes during that workshop was we want to make the user experience of the platform better. And how can we do that? And what's a, what's a, a quick win? Well, little did we know there was a lot of work involved, but it seemed like a quick win at the time, which was to evolve the applications by making a couple of changes to reduce that tap. Ixenos seized that opportunity, uh, submitted a major contribution proposal, and a funny thing happened. Uh, Nokia saw the major contribution proposal and um, offered to participate with Ixenos. So we had this uh, wonderful collaboration and uh, a really great open source success story. Uh, the two companies work together and we've got a, a major enhancement to the platform in a very short amount of time. Uh, the one-click connectivity will make people very happy, um, uh, much easier to um, get access to the internet 
and without all the uh, questions that have been asked previously, which are mostly just requirements and meeting those, and we've worked those out. So it's more policy than uh, than just straight user interface design. Gestures have been supported in the platform, but not in a in a developer friendly way. And now we have a, a gesture framework um, for tap and drag and double tap, and um, and I think even pinch is in there. And what that will enable developers to do is to create applications that are consistent throughout the platform um, with things like kinetic scrolling in a really straightforward and easy manner for Symbian 3. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Nokia submitted the uh, Symbian 4 user interface um, UI concept proposal. And uh, what that proposal details is uh, what, what they'd like to contribute uh, for the user interface and you know, the certain concepts that are included within it, such as um, uh, it's a, it, it's a, in a way it's a revolution, but it's mostly a really elegant evolution of the touch user interface. Uh, you know, examples, the, the two soft keys that are at the bottom of most every screen on a Symbian application, it's baked into the platform. That becomes a toolbar that's optional with up to four buttons. And that enables developers to provide more direct access to commands. And those, and those buttons are actually icons. So they're nicer to look at. That's, that's one change. Another change is that there's a menu that's built into the top of the screen in a title bar that is controlled by the system. And what that menu bar contains is the name of the application that is frontmost and also key commands that are important to the user at that time. There's a back button that's fixed just to the right of the menu bar at the, at the top of the screen. All, there's some visuals that are up on our, on our website. Uh, you can access them from the direct UI and the orbit major contribution proposal landing pages. So you want people to be able to see those. But those two areas, interestingly enough, um, if you're playing a video or you're listening to music, if you're in a content-heavy application, uh, they can sort of fly out of the way in a nice motion graphic animation. And that's just the simplest bit about the user interface. The concept proposal itself is pretty accessible, pretty easy to find, and actually pretty easy to read. And so it'll give um, viewers and readers an opportunity to learn more about what's coming. It's going to completely improve and change the developer experience for creating applications. You know, they have access to a, a, a creator application that allows them to do layout really nicely and easily. Um, they've also got the cute environment for writing the code, which is much easier than uh, Avcon. And um, they're going to be able to test things out a lot faster. It's going to be a lot nicer for them. tell you about the workshops and I want to also tell you about the, uh, the user interface patterns working group. Uh, but first the workshops. Uh, we hold workshops uh, before every in-person council meeting. Uh, we've been having them anywhere from between two and three months apart. Um, and the in-person meetings are all over the world. We just had one in Japan. We have them in London. Um, we had, that, had one in Finland and we're thinking about having one soon in California. Uh, the idea is that people bring their ideas to the table for how the platform can improve. It's a great opportunity to meet people in different areas of the industry, from device makers to operators to designers to software developers, uh, service companies. We all get together. We break out into teams that are mixed of all the different disciplines. And uh, each of those teams comes up with an idea, uh, brainstorms it, creates some storyboards, and then we uh, present to the entire group at the end of the day. We limit um, the audience to about 40 people so that it, it feels like an intimate experience. Um, and culturally, it's been fantastic to see how these workshops differ from country to country. The really fun thing about the Japanese workshop we just did a couple weeks ago was um, the radical um, future thinking for how user experiences can evolve. Uh, one of them was a, a way to control the device. And now we talk about gesture as you know, stroking the screen and tapping the screen. Well, what about rotating the screen like this and like that, moving like the marble, uh, the marble game where you move it around a little maze? Um, that was actually one of the ideas in the workshop. Um, now, is it implementable? Yes. Would it be fun? Yes. Would it be something you'd want to do all the time? Maybe. It would certainly be a great way to, to. Uh, uh, do the instead of a, a stroke or a, a, a small gesture like that to activate your phone, if you just had a gesture like that to uh, change the security to open it up, that would be fun. And there are other ways to do that. Scrolling would certainly be nice.
The pattern library is a completely community contributed for Symbian 3. It's built into the Symbian developer wiki. Uh, if you just search for UI patterns, it comes right up. We have a really fantastic taxonomy that's visual of how to navigate throughout the different user interface elements that Bob Rosenberg created and he's still working on. It's fully interactive, really colorful, Symbian branded, and it's a fun way to find the user interface widgets. Now, I'm not talking about widgets that are installed that are web runtimes, but the actual user interface controls to find which one you want to learn about, uh, but also patterns of how the widgets come together for user interfaces. Um, you know, like how does context get created and what, what can you abstract from it and use for other applications to be consistent with the platform. Now, for Symbian 4, Nokia has offered to contribute another pattern library purely for Symbian 4. And that one is more complete, but for Symbian 3, we could really use community help to get it built out. This job is the most challenging job I've had in my 20-year career. And it's also the most enjoyable because of the difference that I can make and the people that I get to interact with. I'm dealing with developers all over the world, uh, the device creators, the operators. It's, it's fun to experience so much excitement about the community ownership of a mobile platform. And we are completely open. We share all this information very freely. And we're starting to see real innovation really fast. And by publishing our roadmaps, by working together, by having the workshops, uh, by having the open debate on the forums, the user interface brainstorm, um, the ideas website, is, Symbian is going to see massive improvements every six months for a long time. Yeah.